I'm up above Panther Meadows. It's July 9th, 2012. I'm going to try to take some snow samples to uh, duplicate uh, the tests done by Rose Taylor and others uh, four years ago on this date. Uh, they got 61,000 parts per billion of aluminum in the snow. Looks like the snow's melted quite a bit in the last few weeks. I'll probably have to go up to about 8,500 foot elevation. Parking lot's 7,700. One thing I can't duplicate is that four years ago, there was a really bad fire season, the worst in memory. Uh, this year, we've had some late rains. High levels of aluminum in the snowpack on Mount Shasta have been one of the main talking points of the chemtrails crowd for the last four years. And to illustrate this, I'll show a brief clip from my friend Francis Mangels. U.S. Forest Service, here's the concerns, and here's the data. Here's attached data sheet showing 61,100 that the hikers on the mountain are drinking, uh -huh. which is 1,000 over the poison level from Uncle Sam. Right. The Forest Service basically said, go to hell. Uh -huh. We choose not to respond, insulted me, and told me to leave. Well, it looks like Francis was pretty upset about that. I'm about 8,300, 8,500. Uh, just starting to get into a little bit of snow. There's the uh, Seoul Ski Bowl parking lot below me. There's a little bit of a drift there. I think what I'll do is I'll go into uh, this one a couple hundred feet up and then get out the shovels. We're up here between 8,500 and 9,000 now. Uh, you can barely see the parking lot down below us. Here's a nice snow drift I'll be working on in just a second. It's fairly dirty. You can't see the summit from here. Uh, we're looking up at uh, Thumb Rock, 12,800. If you can get there by lunch and you're not totally wiped out, you usually make the summit. We're about timberline. Of course, the soil is very loose. There's hardly any ground cover. Uh, we have a few uh, white bark pine up on the ridge there, and that's it. Well, the snow here is about 15 inches deep. It's overexposed. It's about noon now, but you can see a very uh, dirty layer on the surface and a much cleaner layer down lower in the snow drift. I'm going to take a, a two-bottle sample from the surface area. Uh, that'll give me enough so I can also take a suspended sediment test, and then I'll also take a sample uh, down lower in the drift. Here's a little meltwater stream below the snow level. I've got one more jar, so I'll take a sample here. We're about a quarter mile downstream now, and here's where this little stream goes underground and just starts to recharge the water table. It looks like, oh, a week ago it was flowing under the culvert under the road. In most watersheds, you have a dendritic pattern where the little streams uh, flow together to form bigger streams, but around volcanoes you have a radial pattern where actually most of the streams will get weaker and diminish as they go farther from the source. Here, just for a visual comparison, are the sample bottles. They're melted now. The two on the left are from the dirty snow on top of the drift. The third from the left is the cleaner snow, and the one on the right is the meltwater stream. I'm going to combine the two bottles on the left to get a one liter sample, and I'll put them all into uh, more disposable bottles and take them to the lab. About two weeks later, the lab reports did come back. 
the dirty snow on the top of the drift had 11,400 micrograms per liter. That's parts per billion. The cleaner snow down toward the bottom had just 70.5 micrograms per liter, and the meltwater stream had 73 micrograms per liter. Now, if I'd done this four years ago, I might have gotten 61,000 parts per billion, like the other sample. We had an earlier spring that year. It was drier. It was probably windier. Plus, beginning June 20th, we had the worst fire season in memory, with lots of ash floating through the air. And there are studies showing that wood ashes do have aluminum in them. Some trees are aluminum excluders, but others are aluminum accumulators. However, it's very obvious that they took their sample from the top. And it was pretty misleading of them not to tell us that. The top layer of snow is always pretty dirty in midsummer. Here's another photo taken on Mount Shasta in 2008. Of course, uh, Rose Taylor's name is on the 2008 sample, but she told me she didn't actually go and dig it up herself. Mm. So I suppose she can plead ignorance about this. And it's also very misleading for Francis to say that hikers are drinking this water. Nobody with half a brain is going to drink or eat the dirty snow on the top. They're going to dig down to the clean snow if they're that thirsty, even if they have to do it by hand. And on July 9th, the snow was soft enough to dig by hand. I would rather have Mount Shasta tap water with no detectable aluminum, but 70 micrograms per liter is uh, well within the acceptable EPA standards. Anything less than 200 is acceptable. I mentioned the suspended sediment test. Here's the lab report for that. It came out to 796 milligrams per liter. That's parts per million. Or if you put it in the same unit, 70 196,000 micrograms per liter. So if you divide the aluminum concentration by the suspended sediment concentration, it comes out 1.4%. This is equivalent to a soil sample with 1.4% aluminum. And even Francis says that's normal. In fact, there was a USGS paper about 28 years ago saying that the average soil in the United States contains 7% aluminum. Aluminum is the third most abundant element in the Earth's crust. Of course, in soils uh, with very little clay, like a lot of the local soils, you'd expect the aluminum content to be a lot lower than average. Suspended sediment should be part of all these tests that show a really high aluminum concentration such as uh, what, 4 million micrograms per liter in Sugar Pine Canyon Creek, 12 million micrograms per liter in Sisson Meadows Pond. Uh, these tests are just showing meaningless numbers unless you know how much mud is in the sample. It's like a fraction with a numerator and no denominator. And you know there is a lot of mud in those samples because if you look at the lab reports, it says the medium being tested is sludge. Now my dictionary defines sludge as mud, muck, or ooze. In other words, there's likely to be as much soil in the sample as water. And soil can have 7% aluminum and still be totally normal. Uh, the Chemtrails website, Geoengineering Watch, instructs people to scoop up some sediment from the bottom when they take water samples. Well, it's really borderline fraud to call that a water sample because water samples are normally taken at mid-flow. There's an old principle of logic called Occam's Razor that says, look for the simple explanation. Most often, the simple explanation is the correct explanation for a given phenomenon. If it's not the correct explanation, it's at least the easiest one to disprove, so you can move on to another possible explanation. 
but in this case the known facts fit the simple explanation. There's a lot of wind on Mount Shasta. It's one of the windiest areas in the state. The wind blows a lot of sand and dust on the surface of the snow in late spring and summer. And this sand and dust contains normal amounts of aluminum. You find very little aluminum in the lower layers of snow that were deposited in uh, midwinter. The known facts do not fit the hypothesis that there's a secret conspiracy to alter our climate using chemtrails. If it were chemtrails, we would have most of this aluminum in the layers that accumulated during the winter when we have the most contrail activity rather than in the summer when most of the time we don't even get contrails. If it were chemtrails, the aluminum concentration would be a lot higher. It wouldn't fit the profile of a normal soil. So be skeptical when your friends or acquaintances tell you about these tests that prove chemtrails are real. Typically these tests are done wrong or they're misinterpreted and they show normal results. We have enough real environmental problems to worry about without going down the rabbit hole of a specious conspiracy theory. <laughs>